What's up everybody, this is Danny and I'm here at CES 2024 and there's tech everywhere. If you've never been here, this is an amazing place. It's huge, bunch of different halls. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk around to look at some of the best things. I've already seen a crazy pinball machine, transparent TVs, smart homes, smartphones, everything. So let's see what is the best tech here at CES 2024. Let's go. So CES wouldn't be CES without new TVs and this year was all about the transparent TV. LG really came out swinging with their signature OLED T and the booth entrance was just amazing with 15 of them in sync. But this TV is real and is wireless so it just needs this box to send the signal and I can't lie I was skeptical on this tech but after seeing it in real life it has this unique 3D hologram effect because you can see right through it and the flames just look so real. But the best part of this TV is when you want that pure OLED contrast in color there is a motor back panel that rises up and gives you the full OLED experience so it's the best of both worlds but we all know this is going to be super duper expensive when it goes on sale. Samsung of course won't be outdone so they had their micro LED transparent TV on display and it was also mind-blowing. This one was different because they had another display behind the transparency so it gave it a more immersive 3D hologram look. It was super bright and vibrant and how they were able to show sports stats and information right on top of the game itself. It was really hard to capture on video but trust me it felt like the future Future, but this probably won't come to the market for a while. I've never seen the micro LED TV in person and this was just absolutely stunning. I mean, where are the bezels? They pretty much eliminated them and while this is going to be expensive, it was jaw dropping and I need a GoFundMe for sure. Now the thing that I did not expect to see at the Samsung booth was the 2D 3D gaming monitor. The 3D is completely glasses free and uses cameras built in to continually track your eyes and wow, I cannot believe how good this actually was. Gaming on this took it to another level when it comes to immersiveness and no matter if I move the 3D effect was just so good and felt so natural. Again this was so hard to capture on camera but this looks like a ready to go product so I hope this releases later this year. When it comes to TV and gaming lighting is one of the most important supplements so I stopped by the channel sponsor Govi's booth to check out what's new for 2024. If you like lighting and lighting effects this is going to make you very happy and the booth was incredible. They pretty much updated every product they have but this year Govi is using AI to take their lighting effects to the next level and while camera color matching is already in its third generation at Govi, the camera now has a dedicated AI chip to recognize and trigger certain lighting effects so I got to watch and see the lights react to audio signals and visual cues on the screen. For example, they showed how the TV backlight can interpret and enhance things on movies like gunfire, explosions, cars, helicopters, lightning, and so much more. It was awesome to see the lights and multiple colors moving with the content and it being that accurate, this is definitely that next level that takes it beyond just standard static color matching so I can't wait to try this in my own TV setup at home. Govi's gaming setup was out of this world and some of these lights I'm seeing for the first time, the desk lighting looks super clean so I'm definitely going to install this on my next setup but gaming is about to be taken to the next level with the AI Govi HDMI sync box kit. The new model in 2024 has been updated with HDMI 2.1 so support for 8K resolution is awesome and you can enjoy your gaming with higher refresh rates which is essential to smooth gaming. And now with the updated AI training algorithm it can automatically recognize and trigger effects like you saw on the TV so in-game actions like victory, healing, and even when you die, it can react to those scenes accordingly so games like Warzone 2, CSGO, Fortnite, Genshin Impact, and many other games are supported so I can't wait to try this on some of my favorite games later this year. The thing I like most being a smart home guy is the AI lighting bot. This AI generated content integration really makes lighting fun so that means that you can tell AI exactly what type of lighting effect that you want by voice or text. So let's say you want fall colors, a sports team color match, or a movie inspired color theme, this can do it. I asked AI to do a fireplace effect and it gave me a recommendation of what it wants to do and you just confirm and just like that you can see the Christmas tree lights are now moving and mimicking how fire would look which is impressive. This might not be the best demo but imagine this on outdoor lighting as big as this setup so that should be incredible. The good news about Govi's AI is that it will be integrated to all lighting around the summertime so even existing customers will have something to look forward to so check the link in the description for more information on Govi lighting and their Cognaglow AI. Lighting's about to be fun again in 2024. 
Next, I got my hands on with the Clix keyboard case that turns your iPhone 14 Pro, iPhone 15 Pro, and Pro Max into a modern BlackBerry. This is such an interesting case because while it does bring back the nostalgia of using a physical keyboard, it also brings back functionality like gaining back the screen real estate that is taken up by the on-screen keyboard, and you gain all of those cool iOS keyboard shortcuts, so this is going to be available in a variety of colors at launch, and it's available to order now. The Rabbit R1 was also an interesting device to see launch. This is a totally independent AI device using the large action model which means results are extremely fast you can use it to book your next trip check the financial market book ubers play music and so much more the design was made in partnership with teenage engineering so the color and device look iconic i got quick hands on at the show and this just made me want it a little bit more and the shocker was it was only 199 dollars with no subscription it has speakers a camera a display and it also has optional lte on here with the sim card slot so it's not meant to replace your smartphone but to supplement it in already has sold out twice since launch, so I believe pre-orders are already pushed back until summer. Intel definitely had momentum going into CES 2024 with the incredible laptops that they were powering with their new Meteor Lake processors. The Intel Core Ultra 7 and 9 showed up in the new LG Gram laptops that are super thin and light. The MSI Claw is the first gaming handheld powered by Intel in 2024 since almost all of them that are out now are being powered by AMD. This will definitely be interesting to compare. My standouts of the show were the Asus ZenBook Duo with dual 3K OLED displays and a built-in magnetic keyboard design. I got to use this for a few weeks before CES and got to make a full video on this so I'll leave that link down below if you want to check it out. This is basically a multitasker's dream and with that Intel Core Ultra 9, 32 gigs of RAM and 2 terabyte SSD, this is a beast of a laptop. The HP Transcend 14 laptop really shocked me. The clean design was what really caught my eye but this is so thin and compact and the white one is really striking. The Intel Core Ultra processor plus the RTX 4070 had solid performance so get ready for an insane amount of new and cool laptops coming this spring and summer. The Asus Zephyrus G14 definitely has me excited on the AMD side of things. They cleaned up the design, made it much much thinner and capped it out at an RTX 4070 which makes sense for the performance and thermal limitations. The G16 also looked really sweet if you need more graphics power and an Intel chipset. Of course, tons of concept cars are here at the show. Even LG showed off a concept vehicle, so everywhere you look, there was a concept vehicle. But the Mercedes CLA concept is the one to pay attention to. Mercedes says a form of this is going to be announced later this year with over 460 miles of range, so that is exciting and should be the entry-level model for Mercedes EVs. VinFast even announced an EV truck, which I also thought was interesting, and also the VF3, which is a smaller utility vehicle, so let's see what they plan to do for a comeback after the year they they had last year. I got to see a Hyundai literally drive sideways which is incredible with Mobis so parallel parking should be super simple with this. And Sony also finally gave a date to their Fila EV made in partnership with Honda. It will be available in 2026 and pre-orders should be going live a year before. It looks really sleek, but let's see how many of these appointments make it to the commercial version. Honda also showed off their Concept Zero cars with the Saloon and Space Hub. The Saloon is really wild looking, and I think it stole the show with its retro but futuristic look, and I kind of love it. And on a side note, I got to ride Tesla's Loop here at CES. This is an underground tunnel system that they have between the convention center and resort world. It was really smooth and quick, a little claustrophobic feeling, but so fast to get in between the halls here at CES with the fleet of Model 3 reason model wise running back and forth. Setups and boots are really stunning here at CES and there is always one that stands out and this year it was SK. You know that giant sphere that's in Las Vegas, the one that you can see basically from anywhere when you're in the city? Well SK had a mini one made right in the middle of their booth which was crazy and the theme of this was SK Wonderland, a full blown amusement park here at CES from incredible simulators to a virtual ride in the sky which looked amazing. The scale of this was insane to candy stations that gave it that feel of an amusement park to ride wait times this was hands down the coolest setup here at CES 2024 so props to SK on this incredible booth it looked like a ton of people had fun there next I got to see some experimental stuff over at Samsung display the first concept was what we might see for the next Galaxy Buds it was an earbud case with an OLED display on the outside and what's interesting about it is it had a rotary watch interface so this combines the functionality 
functionality of a smartwatch right on the earbuds case so I can see this being awesome for music playback and having essential apps on the go so you can leave your phone behind at the gym. The Samsung laptop basically has no bezels, super clean with a large punch hole camera design in the middle, but this setup is like what the iPhone has right now with dynamic islands so it will form around the camera to give you more functionality and menu choices so I'm really digging that. And there were some interesting foldable form factors for maybe a smaller tablet or computer with a rollable extending screen which I thought was really neat. And there were some smartphone form factors where the OLED display rolls over the top to give information or notifications while the display is closed. And they even had a foldable smartphone factor that folds both ways. And I'm not sure what the practicality of this design was but it could help the durability of foldable smartphones in the future. I saw so much more at CES 2024, but I wanted to split it up into what I saw in food tech and smart home, so I'll leave that video linked here. There I will cover automated stir fry machines, $10,000 high tech toilets, robot vacuums that basically eat hair for breakfast so there's no more tangle, Samsung's Bali which is supposed to come to market this year, a instant ice cream machine, air purifiers that only use moss, and so much more. So make sure you continue my CES 2024 journey there. All right, that's about it. I hope you found something that you liked at this CES. What do you think about CES 2024? Was it a good show, a bad show? I think it was a pretty good one. I'm tired now. It's actually really cold here in Vegas, so I'll see you guys in the next one. See you at the next CES.